Back with the video number six, and we're continuing our series on witnessing. We looked at uh, the first two were about the spiritual disciplines of Jesus. The first one was knowledge of scripture that Jesus had, the study of scripture. And then we looked at Jesus' spiritual practice of prayer. And now we're looking at Jesus' uh, spiritual practice of witnessing. And this is the second one. I wanted to put a few helps in here. Uh, because I think that's helpful. Sometimes we talk about things, but we never get around sometimes to the how. How can we do that? Commissioner Andrew Miller, some may have remembered, he was the American National Commander. I think about 30 years ago I was at, or more, I was at a, um, a men's rally, and in it he revealed that he made a promise to God and asked God to give him the strength and he would supply the willingness that every day before the sun set, he would witness to at least one person about his faith in the Lord. Every day before the sun set. And he told us during a sermon uh, at a men's rally, which was very inspirational, that he had a chance one day to witness to Wayne Gretzky. And he said, I wanted to tell the great one of the greater one. Well, maybe we wouldn't say every day, but what if we made a promise to God once a week we would share with someone somehow about our faith or once every two weeks and then you could make it more frequent as you got more confident. One of the greatest ways in witnessing is to ask the Lord to present you with the opportunity. Now, you have to be willing, of course, to take advantage of the opportunity if you're going to make it a prayer to give you the opportunity uh, to lead you to someone, to lead you into some circumstances where you can share your faith about the Lord, about his mercy, his salvation, the hope that he gives you, and to invite, start the conversation with someone, and it may eventually lead that you have been a channel for a blessing that to lead them to the Lord. I remember, you know, as we are Christians, we realize that we are Christians because people were willing to share their faith. I remember Sunday school teachers who, uh, you know, were willing to share their faith. They were willing to ask you where you were, where you were spiritually. And of course, the old adage, uh, not a bad one, but we don't hear it so much now. How is it with your soul? I remember as a uh, single officer out in a lonely posting in Newfoundland. And uh, the uh, uh, Colonel Junior Hines came to visit me, stay with me for the weekend, do services. And as we were in the residence by ourselves, he, he said to me, he said, Roy, how is it with your soul? And you know, I never forgot that because very few people have ever asked me. But I never forget, and I always appreciate that he was interested enough to try to find out where I was spiritually. Um, I think of Corkadet, uh, for those who might not be Salvation Army uh, or not recognize that term, when I was in teen Bible study, uh, many, I remember my instructor who uh, always from time to time inquired how I was doing spiritually. And so we've had examples, cousins, parents, uh, uh, pastors, uh, friends who we are where we stand today because people were willing to share something of their faith. And, you know, someone has said the Christian church is only one generation away from extinction. And that is true, because if we don't share our faith, then we we have to look at it and say, and not to make anyone feel guilty, is do we have a faith that's worth sharing? And if we we don't, and we honestly seek and find we don't, then, of course, there is a remedy by drawing near to Christ in the scriptures, in prayer, and in sharing our faith. Because, you know, we need to share our faith. We need to share so our faith becomes more alive to us. And uh, 
we need to share it for the benefit of other souls that may be waiting to hear us say something and we not say it and they lose out. One of the great ways, of course, there's not too many Christian bookstores nowadays, but you can get them online, is to have some tracks. Uh, you can buy them. They're not that expensive. Give peace a chance. One here. Tornado when natural disasters happen and God is there. Signs of the times, a little bit on the prophecy end of it. A living hope, that living hope we have in Christ. He arose, great for Easter time. He is alive. God cares for you. You take even this one, God cares for you. You know, even when we go out to eat, when you give a tip, you can give a track and say, maybe you'll find this interesting. You know, you, there are ways to do it. If we seek, if we ask, we will find. And so I also did this one off the internet. You can get all kinds of stuff off the internet, articles. It's called Four Steps to Peace During a Pandemic. And it says, be still and know that God is in his world. God speaks, but none may hear that voice except he that hath the listening ear. And so here it is. I went over to Staples and... Uh, I got it done off over there. It didn't cost me a great amount, but hey, we're investing in eternal souls, so uh, it is worth it. And it's Four Steps to Peace During the Pandemic, and it's uh, two pages, double space, four things to do. Pray, be thankful, check on your neighbors, meditate on God's Word. But there it is, Four Steps to Peace During the Pandemic. I've gave, given a number of them out and still intend to give them out, so to let people know that even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, God is still in our midst. A way of witnessing. There's always a way if we have a heart for it. And God can give us that heart if we need to be uh, motivated in that way. So that's just a few ways. I mean, uh, you know, being in a conversation and, and that God, to pray that God make us aware of the opportunities that are at our fingertips. I'll just leave you one. Uh, a couple of Christmases ago, when we were at uh, Fenton Falls Church, uh, I was on kettles outside of Tim Hortons, and there was a, a man who was with me. He had often volunteered on kettles. He was helping me this time. And I said to him, I said, Brian, uh, do you go to church anywhere? No, no, I don't. Uh, why don't you come out uh, some Sunday morning at our church? I'd be glad to meet you and be with you. Well, he said, I don't know. My wife doesn't really believe in religion. So anyway, I left it at that. We worked a few more times on kettles and didn't say too much, but I got to know him a bit. So after that, he started coming to church. She started coming to church with him. Then he being a scouter, some weekends he couldn't make it. She came even when he wasn't there. Both of them ended up making a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. One Sunday morning, they got up and both gave their testimony and shared. It was a beautiful meeting. Before we left... He ended up doing the core Bible study, and she ends up heading to cooking in the kitchen for the men's fellowship, a men's fellowship that we had for the whole community, not just for the Salvation Army. But how the Lord works from just an invitation, would you like to come to church? Being aware, God can use any of us. If he can use me, he can use you. God bless you. Bye-bye.